Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the shed. Welcome back to another TV repair job, maybe, potentially. I get a lot of TVs in the e-waste and I've had a lot come in lately. This one's playing a DVD. It's a combination unit and it works beautifully as far as DVDs goes, but it has a problem. Let's see if we can fix it. Okay, let's just stop that film. And the TV screen's good, it, nothing wrong with it. Cosmetically, it's pretty good. I don't know how old it is. It might be about 10 years old, maybe a little bit longer. But it's a good size. I think it's about a 32-inch, and it's handy having the DVD built in. The problem I've noticed is the input for the RF signal or the antenna input, there's a wire sticking out. So the input's broken off. I'm going to pull that board out. We'll see if we can fix that up because if someone wants to use it as a general TV, they're going to need that input. As far as other inputs, everything else looks fine. You've got HDMI, you've got your, your AV inputs, you've got component. So everything's fine. The DVD plays good, but to sell it as a going TV, we really need to fix up the antenna input there. It also comes with a remote control. So I think it's worth fixing. I don't know what this... TV units probably worth to sell secondhand, maybe $80, something like that, given that it's got the DVD player in it. So we're going to get into that. And to do that, we're going to need to take the whole back cover off. That uh, main board there should come out pretty easily. We'll have a look at actually what damage has gone on and see if we can rub a part off another board to fix it. So we won't have any costs for parts, just labor. There's the details of the TV. It's a model LED v32 so probably a 32 inch u83 hdr so yeah it's in good condition with a stand and interestingly and i'll always like to see this the stand it still has the plastic cover on that we know when you buy new things they have that plastic film i like it when people never peel them off because if i can resell it second hand and then peel it off the unit looks brand new i don't even have to clean that so let's get the main board out and have a look at the damage so that's got all the screws out. I think the back will lift off. There we go. And the power cord will slot through there somehow. Yep. Oh, do we have some speaker wires? And we, there's a board in the back here. Oh, that's the DVD player. Okay, we have to unplug that. Oh, actually, these the wiring loom goes across the back over to here. We probably won't even take the back cover right off then. We might just reposition it. so that we can access the main board. All right, we can unplug one here. And that will do to access the board. I'll reposition the camera. Okay, it's only a tiny board. There's not much electronics in here, but there's a lot of wiring looms to unplug. That one came from there. So we'll unplug them while it's on camera because I now can look back if I need to. That will be power in. Uh, this one is quite a long plug. They're actually all different sizes, so it shouldn't be too confusing to put it back together. Okay, we have an earthing strap there as well. And oh, the top's broken off that. Three screws. Or well, four screws if you count the earthing strap. Okay, there we go. There's the board, not much to it. That's the lid off where the socket was. So we'll have to find one similar and see if we can resolder it in. I'm not sure what this loose wire is for. Maybe that was, maybe someone had soldered that on or connected that to try and get it to work without the socket there. I don't know. That looks like a home home solder job. Yeah, hopefully we can fix that. I'll have to see what I can find. Okay, I've just delved into my mid-grade um, circuit board box, which is going for scrap. And some of you may recognize this board out of a recent TV uh, repair failed that I tried to actually bake this motherboard in uh, in an oven. Probably shouldn't call them motherboards. I think I've been told off for that. Let's call it a main board. And the antenna jack and the little box 
is identical size to that one. So even though that one had a solid top, and this one's got a cutout, I don't think it'll make any difference. I think the terminal spacings and the parts that have to solder onto the board are much the same. So I'm going to remove that one from that board, remove the remains of this one, and I'm pretty sure someone has been in here and had a go at it. In fact, I think they've put some sort of tried to clean up to get a solder joint on there and it's gone a little bit rusty. So we'll take that whole box off and we'll take this one off and we'll swap them over. Hopefully that's all we need to do. Okay, at the soldering station now and we're going to add a little bit of solder to all the areas that we want to desolder so that we can remove this entire box. And by adding some good old-fashioned leads, leaded solder, it's uh, much easier to then remove it all. Okay, now that we've built those all up a little bit, we should be able to remelt them much easier and remove it with the solder sucker. Okay, looks like that pin's just dropped through. I don't know if there was even tabs on these ones. There's a tab there. And on its side, and at the end, I still feel like they're quite stuck. I might need to redo that soldering desoldering technique. There's our centre pin. We might be able to pull the pins free with a bit of pressure for some pliers underneath. I think the solder has flowed through the hole and we didn't suck it all out. Okay, it's taken a fair bit to get these free, um, but I've gently levered with a screwdriver. We have to be very careful because there's actually a chip and some components in there. But um, by removing most of the solder, I've been able to just work it so that the remaining solder has cracked. I've only got one spot holding it now. Sorry if you're getting a bit of reflection from the lights here. I'm just concentrating on what I'm doing. And it's almost always difficult to unsolder large metal bits because they just suck the heat away. And you can't get the solder hot enough to melt. There we go. We've got it out without damaging anything. Now we need to remove the one off the other board, which will probably be equally as tricky. And hopefully they're the same footprint. They look to be exactly the same size. So I think we'll be good to go if we can get this one out safely. Okay, this one's putting up a fight as well. But given that we don't need the board, I'm actually going to cut down the sides with some side cutters and it will just free things up a bit and we can clean the tabs up once we get it out. Okay, success. And there we go, our little pieces come off undamaged after a bit of fiddling around with the internal wire. So hopefully that matches up with our board here. And it looks like they're going to line up perfectly. I just have to clean a bit of old solder off them and that's going to work brilliantly yep they're all starting to poke through i'll just clean them up a bit and push them home and we can solder them in so i've cleaned those tabs up with some solder wick and they should just now push in and pretty well click in i think that's just about right a little bit more depth so i just file the edges of the tabs just to um remove the last of the solder and that's going to seat home nicely now excellent we have enough to solder on the back it sits flat that's pretty good i think we can solder that one in all four solder points are really just uh, an earth anyway so electrically it doesn't matter if they don't connect but of course it holds the box in place and it does require some stability when people are plugging and unplugging in cords, which is maybe why it broke in the first place. I'll turn the soldering on up a bit, get enough heat to solder them securely. That should do the job. I do believe we fixed it. Let's plug it back in and make sure it works. We'll have to put perhaps a video player into the um, antenna socket and make sure it works fine. Everything else was working before anyway, so good, good to go. 
Okay, the board is back in the TV, and uh, how good does that look? Just like a new one. Nice and solid, no problems at all. Uh, that's fixed to the extent that I doubt anyone would ever know that it has been repaired. Uh, so there you go. It was handy to keep. Well, I mean, I threw this board into the mid-grade boards to be taken to Melbourne. Um, I'll probably sell it to Eways Ben at some stage, but it's handy to have a stash of mid-grade boards to pinch parts off. We snipped a little bit out of there, but we've salvaged a part off that. Saved me buying a new one, and it looks like a new one. So fantastic. All we need to do is put the TV together and give it a test. So I've brought the TV inside, plugged the antenna into the new socket. Let's power it up. And uh, I'm not sure if we're going to have to tune in channels or not. Uh, they may be already programmed. Not sure. Let's see what happens. TV boots up fine. And it's gone to AV. We don't want AV. Where's our input? Input we want. I guess we want digital TV. Let's see if that brings us any channels. Uh, no information. Are we on different channels? Let's try a channel six. Oh, maybe we need to do a, a manual search. Here we go. We can do a, a scan. And all right, we'll do a bit of a scan. I'll come back to you shortly. It's just about finished its search. It's found a lot of programs and both digital TV and radio. So I would imagine it's all going to be programs now. And there we go. Fantastic. I don't know what channel that is. ABC. By the look of it, really good picture. Let's go to channel six, maybe, which is our local channel. The news is on. Beautiful. This TV is fantastic. The picture looks good. I'll turn that off now. And uh, we've now got a fully repaired TV with DVD ready to sell in the shop. I might go $100, maybe 80 around that vicinity, well worthwhile for my time. And there she is, all cleaned up. I just wiped the dust off it. There's no blemishes at all. And I peeled the plastic off the base there. It looks sparkling new. Uh, as I said earlier, the only trouble, I think, maybe I didn't mention it, the battery cover clips are broken. But other than that, everything works great. Ready to go to the shop. I think I will put $100 on it. It's um, very would suit a new buyer pretty much even though I didn't look up the date I think it's just over 10 years old certainly still perfect working condition and it took me really less than an hour when I take out my filming time so very economical repair I got it for nothing make a hundred dollars save it from going to the e-waste stream that's the best part thanks for watching guys we'll catch you in the next video bye for now